And welcome back to Adobe Live, live from the 11th 99U conference in New York City here at the Lincoln Center. And for the next 25 minutes, I'm going to be together with Jennifer Lyle and Matthew Richmond. Matthew, Jennifer, welcome to Adobe Live Thanks. because we're going to be talking about something that many people out there are waiting for to see and yeah. wait, like to getting news on and I see the chat has already become like yep. wild with questions and here yeah. we go yes hello so remember this is a live stream here on behance.net slash live slash Adobe live and the cool thing about it is that you can ask questions in the chat and we will try to answer them. We also have moderators right on yes. uh, in the chat. Not only is Tim um, uh, from Germany here, he's like our super moderator, but we also have yeah. moderators from your teams, right? Yes, we've got Steven and Joel and John who are PMs on the Photoshop team also mm -hmm. standing by and answering questions. PMs are product managers, yes. for those of you who don't know. Um, I'm always explaining all these <laughs> acronyms we do have. <laughs> yes. Oh, so, yeah, do you, maybe we should start just by very quickly saying who you are, what you do at Adobe, sure. and, you know, exactly, you know. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> yeah. Cool. I'll start. Hi, my name is Jenny Lyle, and I am a product manager on the Photoshop team. And so I've been working with a team of designers, such as Matthew Richmond here, and engineers. Um, we have been working on Photoshop, giving you a sneak of it on iPad today. Because mm. yep. last time we saw it was at Adobe Max, right? Yes. Yeah, that's yeah. like last time we saw it. Yeah. Well, yeah. a lot has happened since. More progress. Yeah, yes. more progress. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, oh, hi. I'm, yeah. I'm Matthew Richmond. I'm the experience design director for all the DI products at Adobe. So, Photoshop digital being imaging. the biggest digital <laughs> imaging product. Yeah. Uh, and I work with the design teams that have been working on Photoshop for your iPad for mm -hmm. probably about two years now. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's a project that's like started. Yes, like, yeah, it's, it, take, it takes a while. It takes a while, yes, right? Yes. Oh, definitely. Um, and we started, we started with just design iterations, we did a ton of research, and mm -hmm. then it, it became more mm -hmm. of an official product. Because the question always is what do people really need? Mm -hmm. Or what, how do they really? use it or how do they want to use it and things like all these things information comes together and that's what decisions are based upon yeah. right exactly. a lot of research yes so a lot of what you'll mm -hmm. see here today mm -hmm. is from hundreds of hours and hours mm -hmm. of customer interviews yeah. and research well yeah, yeah. well Karim uh, isn't iPad really worth the, to use Photoshop for compositing uh, given that the file system and the iPad beep. <laughs> well <laughs> you know you know what just <laughs> see. <laughs> yes, wait and see for yourself. Because the file system, yeah, the, it, we're not really using the file system. No, yeah, we are um, syncing this directly mm -hmm. over Creative Cloud, mm -hmm. and it is one of those conveniences where anywhere you work on your PSD, you can work on any device, and your most recent PSDs will just show up um, mm -hmm. through Photoshop. All right. Mm -hmm. So. Again? Yeah. Yeah. Again. Okay, Again. cool. Everybody is like really. Let's okay. let's see it. Stop talking, Rufus. <laughs> okay. Right. Um, just a little little more uh, background. And so we announced last year, and we are still working very hard on it. So this is another sneak. You're going to see progress here, mm -hmm. and um, we're super excited um, to show you what's what's up here. And you know, this is a beginning of a journey. Photoshop is a 28-year product, and we have to start somewhere. And so one place we thought was really important to start is, you know, focusing on the core tools that Photoshop has. And when you think about building in Photoshop, creating, it's a lot of building upon layers and layers and layers. So, so we want to make sure that you can create these beautiful composites, and we want to continue adding on various workflows after that. And so what you're going to see here is the beginning. And let's go ahead and get started. So can I, you know, like yeah. the, the question that pops up so frequently here is <laughs> release, release date, date. So let's just close that conversation. Okay. The release date is 2019. Yes. Right. Yes. And that's all we're gonna say. Yeah. So you can you can <laughs> save your e ink there. It's there's not gonna be another answer. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So what you see here is very familiar to what you see on Photoshop Desktop. You have your core tools on the left. I could select various tools here. And some of the tools have a little dot on the bottom, which we'll get to. 
and then on the right hand side you've got this super minimal layer stack so then you could really keep your eyes on the canvas. So that's one of our themes here. We want you to keep your eyes on your work uninterrupted as much as possible and um, we know that if you are a Photoshop user you also like all the details of your layers and I could easily do so by taking my two fingers and pinching to zoom and open and I can also tap back and forth two icons on the top right hand corner to show that. So now I'm in my detailed view and you can see the complexity of this document, which, by the way, I have to give credit to an artist, Think Lumi. You can check him out online on Instagram. Um, he graciously provided us this document to work with. So thank you, Lumi. So we've got a number of different layers here. You could see there's layer masks. You could create masks here. You could work with masks. There are adjustment layers as well, so you could work really non-destructive non-destructively. Non-destructively, that's non -destructively. so super important, yes. right? Yes. Don't harm pixels on the way ever. That is one of our <laughs> design principles yeah. to... And, and as you go through this, like the origin story here is the basic building blocks of Photoshop, right? Mm -hmm. The essential tools that have always been able to be used together and make the stuff that you can only see mm -hmm. in your mind, right? On mm -hmm. top of that, we have to layer making it approachable for new users, right? People who have mm -hmm. never used Photoshop before to a lot of new users, this might be their first step into Photoshop, which is why it's super clean and you have just the mm -hmm. tools yeah. and the basic layers. Then beyond that is the need as Photoshop users ourselves to get to all the gnarly details and all the power, reinventing them for touch, right? So that's that's where the design teams and the product teams have spent a ton of time. Like yeah. having the engine's amazing, mm -hmm. yeah. but then figuring out how to bring it to a new platform mm -hmm. and make yeah. it just as fast, not just technically like speed speed, yeah. but as you're working as some mm -hmm. of the stuff will show. Well I think, you know, touches are can be quicker than than clicking. Yes. Like, for example, I love like that just opening the layers, mm -hmm. you know, like, yeah. that was pretty cool. Super, super smooth. Mm -hmm. I'm glad you brought up Engine, because yep. this is actually using the same exact Photoshop code base, so your work can pass through, you're not importing, you're not converting, it's reading the same exact pixels, mm -hmm. and the other super important thing I forgot to mention at the beginning is that this is a PSD. You are opening up a PSD, so this is a multi-layer, really complex PSD. And that's what we heard from day one, which is mm -hmm. like, if I get Photoshop on any other device, I want to be able to open up a PSD, which right. a lot of apps can't do. Cool. So on the note of power, um, I'll go ahead and show you one thing here. So with Photoshop here, we know it has to be powerful, and so we know a lot of selections are involved, and with any layer, you could go in and you could reload selections. So I'm gonna quickly tap reload a selection mm -hmm. here, and now you could see this like finely selected mountain, which may have taken hours. I could just really get into it and make more selections if I want to. And I'm actually zooming down to the very last pixel here, and that's important as a compositor. And what I can also do is with my Apple Pencil, I could double tap, zoom all the way out, double tap, zoom all the way into the same exact spot that I was at. And so this is really cool. That's another consideration, yeah. right? When designing the app is like, how yeah. can we leverage, yeah, right. the double mm -hmm. tap on the pencil, how can yeah. we? It's the, yeah. these tools were not born at a point in time mm -hmm. which we had this yeah. or this to <laughs> use them. Yeah. So we get over that hump and then there's these superpowers that have come mm -hmm, mm -hmm. From, from, from this. Like just, yeah. like a lot of users who've used Photoshop for years, they might not use the lasso tool because they've got their other ways to do things, right? Mm -hmm. And we all have those other ways to do things, but the, the realization that with this device on, on here, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. just a lasso selection is so much yeah. faster and mm -hmm. so much more articulate mm -hmm. than when yeah. you've been doing, trying to do it with a mouse yeah. for years. Yeah. All right. And so now you see marching ants for the selection. We've begun wiring up keyboard shortcuts, which we know are super important. So now I could flip through my selection view. I could see an overlay. I could see it on black, on white, black on white. I could flip through this super fast. 
and we are wiring up a lot of very core, like copy and paste mm -hmm. kind of keyboard shortcuts in it too. So if you have the iPad with um, attached keyboard, you could also use that. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is actually some editing. And I wanna take this foreground mountain, blend it to the back. And so I'll add a layer. I wanna do this non-destructively, grab my paint bucket, and then pick a color that is closer to, using my eyedropper, this background blue. And with a tap, I'll go ahead and fill in this layer. Now, with all the layers, we have very powerful layer properties. And so when I tap the layer properties, it just pulls up and it's contextual. So if I'm on a text layer or type layer, I see my type properties. Um, so right here, I could play with the various blend modes. We have these little thumbnail previews, so I could take a look at this list and scroll through this. But I really want to keep my eyes on the canvas and I get live previews here. So I prefer that. Again, the theme of live previews on canvas is super important. We don't want to interrupt your work. So I'll land here on soft white and you could see the before and after. The other thing about Photoshop is about precision. And so we also want to make this super precise. Now, I want to take this green grass and I want to also make this blended in. And what I can do is actually, I'll just grab a selection tool. Let's go to my mountain layer. And I'll zoom in on just a little spot, make a selection here. Here, I'll just switch it to overlay so you can see it better. And you can notice how she used the keyboard to do that. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Yeah. <laughs> I, get, I need to get a keyboard. <laughs> So we have a tech that we've wired up called Select Sil Similar. And what it does, it selects all the similar color that I've selected in that patch. And so now let me zoom out. And you can see it selected all the green, the same color that I wanted. It excluded the dark green moss. It also excluded some of the yellow poppies. And this could have taken me hours to refine, but I was able to do it with select similar. So that's very cool. And then what I can do here is then add an adjustment layer, hue set, and again, as I move through any of my sliders, live previews. Live previews. <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's turn this down. And now you can see, I'm going to put my pencil up for a second, before and after, okay. So I wanna hop back to my, uh, my compact layers and bring back a couple of, oh, by the way, you'll notice that these, this adjustment layer also comes with a mask. It's clipped onto my mountain. And so I have all of these uh, details that I have on desktop that are really important. Yeah, and, and the touch layers panel, like we spent a lot of time designing it so that, you know, over time, the more you get used to it, you'll be able to start doing most of the basic operations mm -hmm. you've done with the full layer stack, and yeah. some of it's faster, like dragging and rearranging and moving things around, and when you go into one of them, you actually just focus on that one little layer and not the whole stack as well. Yeah. Yep. So let's bring back a couple of layers. Here's the planet, a couple of auras, and then a rainbow galaxy, and here you could see... Does that exist in nature? <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was there the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so by double, cla double clapping, double tapping on this, I can get deeper into that layer stack and select this rainbow galaxy. I want to duplicate mm -hmm. it pretty quickly. And so let me bring up these, um, this touch shortcut here. So. If you have a keyboard or not, you could also accelerate your workflow with uh, this shortcut. And it's contextual, too. And so I'm on move. I hold down. I can rapidly duplicate. If I'm on brush, I can erase. And we're wiring up on different tools. And so you could have these like quick access um, shortcuts to use. And I don't want this to look just like a duplicate. So I'll head into transform. 
and do a distorting transform here. And as I'm moving this, you could see it on the screen. I could hold down, flip it over. The double rainbow galaxy. Double <laughs> rainbow! We got the joke. <laughs> Finally, someone. Nobody ever gets my joke there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. So here, again, let's bring up masking. It's super important. So I'll mask away a couple of the stars. So add a mask. Grab my paintbrush, pull up the size of my paintbrush. You could see a live preview of the size. I'll just quickly use my finger for this one. And as I'm erasing, you could see the mask is showing a preview of the things that I've hidden. So black means hiding, and um, it's masking it away here. So this looks pretty and good. And you mentioned now. we've mentioned live previews a lot because yeah. one of the things we're finding the more time we spend on this device with this engine is we can actually start to do more things live than mm -hmm. we've been able to do in the past. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Definitely. And those of us that have been using for Photoshop for many, many years yeah. didn't even realize that it wasn't live mm -hmm. until now. Okay. Yeah. And you wanted to show something as well? Um, I was gonna show something similar, but I wanna oh. show it here. Do you wanna move the, yeah. the yeah, we can camera move the GoPro over? And then, over? Yeah. Let me see what you see. Can you see? Okay. Yeah. Is there, okay. So, so I uh, and Jenny showed a little bit of this, and Jenny mentioned that, that you know there is full keyboard support, mm -hmm. right? So some of some of ye old keyboard commands will be there, but for people who don't have a keyboard around or might not want to use a keyboard, the team spent a lot of time trying to figure out how we accelerate the workflows, because when you sit down and you talk to people who've been using Photoshop for years and you watch them work. Um, this hand disappears and it's like playing an instrument and yeah. you're working with one hand and you're just using all these keys. So the question is, is can we come up with a touch-based modifier system that wouldn't be as complex as you know, having that many keys, but still accelerates the workflow. So uh, I have a, a basic simple Photoshop file here and I have these little buildings on their own layer. And I'm just gonna go into the move tool and right here on my screen, I think you can see it, there's a, li there's a little dot. Uh, and this is the touch modifier area. And I can drag this wherever I want on the screen, wherever's comfortable. Mm -hmm. So right now I'm just working with the iPad down. Um, and without touching that or using that, with the move tool selected, I can move these buildings around, mm -hmm. right? But um, for years in Photoshop, there's wanting to duplicate things, there's wanting to constrain things. So uh, if I press down uh, on the modifier, I'm essentially doing what we refer to as like level one of the modifier. So here, this move action is constrained to, to, to 90 degrees, to, to just going parallel. Um, if I was to trigger the second level, it'll actually duplicate this layer, right? So you're like, oh, that's great, we can do both. And the builds and the tool are actually at a state where we're now starting to be able to use it and do real stuff. So if you've been using Photoshop for a while, you realize that a lot of times you use these things together. Mm -hmm. So now that I've, now that I've, uh, here, let me, let me just undo that. I move it around. So if I if I have the move tool and I press the level two and I make a second copy, if I then switch back to level one, it's a copy and it's constrained mm -hmm. at the same time. So it is new tricks for Photoshop. Yeah. It's new ways to use your hand to do the same stuff. But after playing with this for like 15 minutes, it becomes <laughs> just as familiar as the old yeah. way. And I'm excited, you know, every time I see any of the designers or even Jenny, who's probably done more demos than anybody else <laughs> at this point in time, they're starting to do this quickly mm -hmm. and, and, and faster than I think even some of us, at, we asked the same question in the beginning, like, yeah. can we do this? Mm -hmm. Will it be fast? Will it be, can we accelerate it? And we're starting to figure out ways to do that and it's really exciting. Yeah. Anything you want to add? I mean, we have, again, contextual mm -hmm. touch modifiers and mm -hmm. so, if you go into another, so Matthew's going into transform now, right. and he is able to, <laughs> he may be able to. Yeah, there you go. He's also working on the developer there we go. build. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so here we go. So, so I can rotate it here, yeah. and then if I if I uh -huh. press the modifier, it's constrained, right? So I want to yeah. flip it all the way around like this. Yeah. Move it over here. Yeah. All right, so this was pretty much like our way of saying, we're working on it. <laughs> it's yeah. advancing. It's, uh, you know, we're, this, we're taking this super seriously. I mean, 
uh, and we can see the progress also looking at you know like this very uh, complex file that you've shown us Danny yeah. with the the planets the double rainbow the <laughs> <laughs> the um, yeah I think you know like it's just a way for you to understand that you know we're getting there mm -hmm. yeah. you know and uh, we haven't abandoned the idea at all. Yeah. Actually. No, absolutely not. <laughs> and the team is the people that have been using this and making this for 20 mm -hmm. years. Like, we yeah. understand the responsibility that we have mm -hmm. to pull this off the right yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, so, like, yeah, we presented it the first time at Max. Uh, that was, what, six months uh -huh. ago? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. And like I yeah. said, now it's 2019, but we're only four months into 2019. So there's still a little bit of time, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think it's super exciting to see where it's going um, and also like the, the work you guys put into it, like um, exploring the touch features, the uh, uh, new ways of interacting with layers, with objects, with... Uh, um, and of course, we've only seen a very small part mm. of what, you know, what is possible. Um, yeah. I've seen much more, but <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it's going to be super, super powerful and I'm really excited to... Um, you know, to see that coming to life. Yeah, so are we. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having us here. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for being with us. Yeah. And you guys stay tuned. We're going to be thank right back at the top of the hour. Bye. Bye. Bye.